Hello everyone, this is Qingyun Wu. Today it's my pleasure to introduce our work about online automal. Before diving into online automal, let's first look at what is online machine learning and why it is important. Online learning is a type of learning method targeted at scenarios with the following properties. In a typical online learning setting, data is only available in a sequential order, as opposed to the case in the offline learning or batch learning setting, where people usually assume there are datasets collected upfront. With this access to a data stream, the training and the learning is performed online as we have more and more data. And finally, the prediction or decision making of the online learning algorithm also need to be performed online. Typical online learning paradigms include the, including the ones, include the ones in the full information setting and the partial information setting, also known as the banded feedback setting. One notable online learning product is the Azure Personalized Service at Microsoft. It is a cloud-based service that helps customers' application choose the best content to their users. In this work, as an initial attempt for online auto ML, we primarily focus on the online, uh, online learning setting with full information feedback. Online learning is, is a desirable uh, learning paradigm that can learn from real-time experiences. But uh, similar as the case in offline batch learning setting, effective online learning also involves the tuning of hyperparameters. For example, featureization choices, learning rate, regularization, and etc. This tuning is now mostly done by, by data scientists. Online learning services have a natural need for automatic style learning, which automatically choose hyperparameter configurations over some set of possible choices. Automatic is kind of heavily, heavily studied in the offline learning setting. However, it is difficult, if not impossible, to directly apply these conventional offline automatic methods to the online setting. This difficulty is mainly caused by the unique properties because of the online learning paradigm. Firstly, in a practical online learning setting, there is usually a sharp computation constraint that any algorithm needs to respect. This sharp computation constraint is usually ignored in conventional automatic methods. Secondly, any functioning on online system needs to be able to handle vastly different scales of data volume which makes it non-trivial to decide how many data samples we want to spend on a model with a particular hyperparameter. And finally, the learning algorithms are being evaluated constantly, which is obviously not the case in a typical offline learning setting, where people can just use the final performance on a test dataset to assess the quality of the hyperparameter. This online performance evaluation actually brings very critical new challenges to the online automobile because it means that in addition to the computation price of the tuning, we also need to pay for the learning price of the tuning process. With this unique constraints, the main research question is how can we best design an efficient online learning uh, online automobile solution, which can find a balance between searching over a large a number of possible choices such that we are able to navigate a good one, and concentrating the limited computation budget on a few promising choices, such that we do not pay a high learning price. To this end, we propose this Champion Challenger Online Automobile Framework. In this framework, we characterize all the configurations into two categories, including one champion, which is the configuration that is proven the best at any time point and the rest of the candidate configurations under consideration are all called challenges. Before zooming into the details about how the solution works, let me first introduce several important concepts in this framework. First, we introduce the concept of live model pool, the size of which is fixed. It contains all the live models allowed in the online learning system. This concept is designed to respect the sharp computation constraint mentioned earlier. And, there, and we characterize all the configurations under consideration into one champion and a set of challenges. The champion starts with an initial configuration, which is usually a default configuration. 
it will be compared with the challengers, and and will be updated once a new, a challenger is found to be better through a statistical test. The challenger are progressively added in this framework. Since the size of the live model pool is fixed, we can only afford running a, a particular amount of the challengers. We call the challengers that are running the live challengers. So when I say uh, run a configuration, I mean training and evaluating the model built on built based on the configuration. Now let's look. Uh, let's let's took, take a look at the three major components of this Cha Cha framework, including how we promote a champion, how we generate challenges, and how we do the scheduling. If you are familiar with the offline AutoML algorithms, you can consider this challenger generation as an online construction of the search space, and the live challenger together with the champion are the configurations selected to evaluate. As mentioned earlier, as opposed to the offline learning setting where you have fixed dataset to assess the quality of the configuration, in the online learning setting, there is no clear stopping time of the evaluation. The automatic algorithm needs to decide when to stop. That is where the live challenger scheduling plays a role. Now let's look at how we update a champion. One basic intuition here is to update it once we find a configuration with better performance. For example, we can calculate the progressive validation loss, which is a commonly used empirical performance metric in online learning. But the tricky part is that in online learning setting, we need to be careful about the potential gap between the empirical performance and the true performance, which is essentially affected by how many observations the model have accumulated and the function class of the model. So in order to ensure the comparison result is significant, we, comp we compare the challenger's loss upper bound with the champion's loss lower bound minus a term. The upper and the lower bounds are constructed based on the progressive validation loss and the sample complexity bound of the learner. This extra term deducted on the right-hand side is to ensure that every time we decide to promote a new champion, we are not only finding a better configuration, but can also guarantee the magnitude of the improvement. Now that we have set up a way to promote the champion, let's see how we gather the challenges, which are the configuration under consideration. At the first glance, you may feel this question trivial. For example, why can we just define a search space and treat all the configurations as, ch as the challenges? Conceptually, you can do that, but uh, this is usually not a good way in the online learning setting, because it, almost, it will almost for sure put us in a situation um, where we will have to try a very large amount of challenges from the very beginning. Since trying each configuration is very costly, both in terms of computation cost and in terms of pricing, uh, learning cost, the naive, this naive approach is not going to work well. In light of this, we decided to design a challenger generation component such that challengers can be added progressively. We do this by assuming the availability of a configuration oracle function, which has this following property. When provided with a particular input, the configuration oracle is able to generate a set of candidate configurations which contains at least one configuration that is significantly better than the input configuration, unless the input is already the best. Then, we can generate new challenges by calling this configuration oracle with the champion as the input. In this way, we can ensure that it is possible for us to make further progress along our hyperparameter search. Now that we have found a way to progressively construct the search space, but it is still likely that the total number of challenges is still larger than the maximum number of live models allowed. So we need to further decide which configurations are to run. Chacha -cha keeps the champion always running, which is not difficult to understand because the champion, the champion is the best configuration identified so far. And in addition to this, to running this champion, 
For the rest of the slots, Chacha schedules a set of challenges to run. The high-level idea of the scheduling part to, is to amortize the computation, co computation cost by starting from low resource al uh, allocation and gradually increase it. Specifically, we introduce the notion of resource lease for each of the uh, configuration, which is the amount of resource guaranteed once it is um, scheduled to run, unless it is identified to be worse than the champion. With this notion of resource lease, we have the scheduling checkpoints, which are the time points where any challenger's current resource lease is reached. And we do the scheduling only at those uh, scheduling checkpoints. At a particular scheduling checkpoint, which concerns with a particular left um, challenger, we take the following actions. First, we double the resource list of the concerned challenger such that if this challenger is scheduled to run again, we can run it long for a longer time. And then we remove it from the live challenger pool if its performance is not among the top performing ones. Otherwise, we keep it running. Note that since the resource lists have doubled, we can run it for a longer time. If in step two, uh, we did remove a live challenger, we will have an empty slot of live model now. Then we will add a new challenger from the existing challenger pool. We choose a new challenger according uh, which has the minimum resource list from the current challenger pool. This design essentially means that we are using half of the slots to try all the challenges without starving any of them. And we use this doubling trick to amortize the computation cost involved in this, um, in this process. With these three major components being introduced, let's take a look at um, how this whole picture, how, how this um, chacha works. So we start from an initial configuration, set it as the champion, and the configuration oracle will be triggered because the very first champion is also considered as a new champion. Then this configuration oracle will generate a set of challenges based on the current champion. And then we call this live challenger scheduling to decide which ones we want to try at any time point. After all this, we will have a set of live models which can be used to perform online learning. These components will be triggered along the way of the online learning process. The proposed method is theoretically grounded. We have a theorem proving its sublinear regret bound. The final order of the regret bound depends on the regret order of the base learning algorithm. The proof of this theorem is based on these two major components of this framework including the statistical test and the amortized resource allocation strategy. For empirical evaluation, we, test, uh, we tested um, our method in FiberRabbit, which is an open, uh, open, open source online machine learning library. We performed the evaluation on two, on two automatic tasks. The first task is to tune namespace interactions in, in FiberRabbit. A namespace is a group of features, and by adding, na uh, adding namespace interactions, we are adding additional features generated from the corresponding groups of features. Another task we tested is to tune both namespace interactions and the learning rate, which is the numerical hyperparameter. We provide a default implementation of the configuration oracle for the two types of uh, hyperparameters considered in our evaluation. For the namespace interaction um, problem, we realize the configuration oracle in the following way. Given the input namespace uh, interaction configuration, it generates all configurations which have one additional second order interaction based on the input configuration, uh, input namespace interaction. For the numerical hyperparameter, we use an existing hyperparameter optimization method called CFO to do the hyperparameter suggestion. 
We performed the evaluation on 15 open ML regression datasets, in, uh, on which we grouped the features into 10 namespaces. And the maximum number of life models allowed is 5. We compared the chacha with the following methods. The first one is the vanilla online learning algorithm, which does not involve any tuning. The second comparator is to exhaust the first batch of challenges generated by the configuration oracle in, as in Chaja. And in the third comparator, the method used a set of randomly selected configuration and keep running them. Note that the first two comparators are extreme cases which uh, do not necessarily align with the, um, the maximum number of uh, live models allowed. For example, in the, in, in the vanilla method, there is only one lab model running. And in the exhaustive method, there are more uh, lab models running than what is allowed in Chacha and the random. This configuration, uh, this figure shows a typical result obtained in our evaluation, from which we can indeed see strong empirical performance of Chacha. It is even better than exhaustive. Note that this is possible because exhaustive only exhausts the first batch of the challenges, and Chacha is able to make further progress by uh, keep calling the configuration oracle once new champion is detected. In this figure, we show the aggregated results on the 15 datasets uh, tested, and we uh, observe consistently better performance from Chacha. In summary, Chacha is the first of its kind automobile solution that can operate in an online learning manner, respecting unique properties of online learning. It is theoretically sound and has robust good performance in practice. And finally, Chacha is very flexible and extensible to um, ex extensible and it can handle various of customized needs. Chaja is now open sourced in this automobile library called Flamo. Please feel free to check it, check it out there. You can also find a demo of, uh, of the usage of Chaja in this Python notebook. In this notebook, I'll showcase how to use Chaja to perform the tuning tasks mentioned in this talk with just several lines of code. Now let me, um, let me briefly walk you through this notebook to learn um, the usage of it. So after installing this library, we load an open ML dataset and set up the online learning loop. For comparison, we first, uh, create, it, we first create a vanilla bubble rabbit learner, which will just use the default type of RAMT configuration set um, in bubble rabbit. And then let's see how we can use Chacha to do the online tuning. In this library, Chacha is realized by this auto VW class, which means that we are using online learners from Viper Rabbit. In order to perform the tuning, you can just create an auto VW instance and specify the number of live models allowed and the search space. For example, here we are tuning the namespace interactions. So we can just set the um, search space as the names as the namespace interactions. And uh, in the other example, we tune both namespace interactions and the learning rate. By we can do this by specifying the search space accordingly. This figure shows a quick result comparison in terms of progressive validation loss. From here, we can indeed see a better performance from Chacha. And finally, it can, you can easily perform online tuning on customized uh, VibraRabbit learners by specifying additional arguments on the learner through the search space. Thank you for your attention, and we welcome your comments and feedback.